All right, guys, here we are, round two of our modern eight man with Jund mid range. We are on the play and we will keep. Um, so we have this awkward raging ravine alongside a turn one play that we want to do. Uh, so, like two land inquisition, tarmogoyf, double bolt, terminate. Um, this hand's great, but uh, we're going to have to try and find a way to, um, you know, use this inquisition and tarmogoyf alongside this tap land that we have. Um, I am a fan of just playing the turn one discard spell. Like, I'll Bloodstained Mire, fetch a Blood Crypt, I'm able to cast a discard spell. If I hit my second land on curve, great, I'll play Tarmogoyf. If not, I'll just play a tap land, hold up Bolt. Um, I'm not interested in like playing a tap land and then playing Goyf on two as just like a one two if there's nothing else going on. Because um, if my opponent is Grixis Control and just plays lands or something, um, he's able to answer my Goyf with a Bolt at that point. So I like just leading with the discard spell. Um, but we're going to keep here. I think Blood Crypt is what we fetch. Alright, we're playing Twin again. Unfortunately, two twin, uh, twin opponents in a row. But, um, yeah, so we're taking... He's got Double Bolt, Deceiver, Double Twin, and an Island and a Mountain. So we're definitely going to take Deceiver Exarch. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, if we play Raging Ravine... And then next turn, crack our fetch, Tarmon Glyph is a 1-2. Um, our opponent, all he's doing is just playing lands for the first couple turns of the game. Um, and then he's able to answer our Glyph with a bolt. But this way we've got a sorcery and a deceiver in the yard, which means Tarmon Glyph is already a 3-4. Um, and then becomes a 4-5, you know, once we get an instant in the yard too. So hitting a second land on curve would be excellent here. But even if we don't, I think we're okay. We missed it. Yeah, Raging Ravine, pass. I'm um, definitely just going to bolt his face. Um, I just want to be able to cheaply play this Tassiger, uh, grow our Tarmogoyf. Um, we took the Deceiver, so like if he has another Deceiver, we have a Terminate. We might save this bolt in case of a Pestermite. But I think getting one in the graveyard to make our, uh, our Tassiger cheaper is pretty good. So, bolt you. He hit a Scalding Turn. Do we know all the cards in his hand? I think we know five. A fetch is really good. So, like, uh, Tarmogoyf is our fourth card in the yard. If he counters it with, like, a spell center or something, then we can fetch play Tassiger. Opponent has double lightning bolt, double twin. There's another card I'm forgetting, I think. Maybe that's it. If he wants to double bolt me here, I'm fine with that. Doesn't look like it though. Um, I think we want, yeah, Overgrown Tomb. Rupt Decay was a really good draw. I don't know, like I considered getting a Stomping Ground and fetching down to 13 uh, or 14. That way I could Bolt and I could play this Tassigur for one mana and leave up Terminate. Um, I don't know. Like if our opponent has a Deceiver, he's probably going to flash it in. Uh, in combat. Maybe not if he's worried about Liliana the Veil. So like, um, shocking ourselves and casting a bolt uh, lets us play Tassier this turn, but it doesn't really help, like, I don't know, if our opponent has a remand, then we feel pretty bad. Um, and it doesn't let us like play Tassier and hold up one of these removal spells, but I think we're fine. Like, we have a Tarmogoyf. Should be good enough. Yeah, he's just going to double bolt. I don't know. Maybe we should have shocked and bolted him. We definitely don't need to now because we already have five cards in our graveyard. Maelstrom Pulse.
Yeah, Remand would be a sad day. Remand is so good against these Delve spells. Like, on this board, Remand is like a two-mana Cryptic Command. <laughs> Which seems fair. Thoughtseize is pretty good. I think we lead with that. Hmm. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good remand for him because he knows that we drew the Thoughtseize that turn because um, we've passed with open mana a couple turns uh, last turn, I believe. Um, and we can't afford, so he knows we're not, we don't have another land in hand, and we can't afford a Thoughtseize here because he could deceive her in response, and we don't have a way to kill it, um, and we know he has the twins, so. And twins. All right, our opponent is at seven. Lava Mancer. Sure. All right, so double twin, nothing else. So he is dead. Um, we abrupt decay the Tarmogoyf. Um, we untap, terminate the Lava Mancer, swing and bolt him. So black, green, abrupt decay. All right, so team or twin, different matchup. Terminature and bolt. Yep. All right. So game one. Um. So teamer twin. So the big difference in the teamer twin matchup, I think, is he doesn't have as many control elements. Um. His tarmogoyfs are really good for blocking my tarmogoyfs and uh, stressing my terminates and abrupt decays. Um. The best way to handle this, I think, is. I mean, whereas we might consider cutting Maelstrom Pulse um, in like the straight blue-red matchup, uh, I think we're definitely keeping him in here. Um, just trying to find ways to handle his Tarmogoyf um, without using up like premium removal on it. I think like we're definitely not interested in things like Fulminator Mage in the Teamer matchup. Um, we're keeping all of our bolts we're keeping we're definitely keeping our discard so then it just becomes like what are we cutting which um i imagine will just be this coligon's command like the incidental discard is great um when we're just trying to like wear down his resources um with our like discard and liliana the veil um like i love the discard mode on coligon's command the best mode is like you know they discard a card we get to like return a creature especially when our tarmogoyfs will be like running into each other and he's gonna be one of us is going to be casting Lightning Bolt to finish off the other Tarmogoyf, things like that. Being able to get that back is great. Um, but I don't see what else I want to cut. It's possible playing a Kologon's Command is better than the second Maelstrom Pulse. Um, just because we don't really want to be tapping out in Sorcery Speed. Maybe we'll split it. So we'll split it, and when we draw the Kologon's Command, we'll see if we'll rather have it be a Maelstrom Pulse. Um, I'm I'm seeing it in the future a little bit here, and I I don't think we're going to, I think we're going to be happy with the Coligans command when we draw it, but I think I still want to play one Maelstrom Pulse. Yeah, so this hand is great. Three lands, Thoughtseize, and a Confidant, and a Liliana. We will keep.
So we're gonna blood say mire, fetch a swamp, verdict catacombs, fetch a forest, blood crypt. Okay. So serum visions and he scries on top and on bottom. Do a stomping ground. Doesn't change anything. Negate Snapcaster Twin Tarmogoyf. So we kept one card on top. He has a negate for a Liliana. Um, I think we're I think we're taking Tarmogoyf here, but we're really hoping to draw into some removal for his um, Deceiver. Like I don't think we can take Twin with our opponent. Like, <coughs> excuse me, if we were on the play and like this was our turn one. Um, we might just take the twin because like we play our confidant on turn two on his turn two He plays Tarmogoyf and then we get to play Liliana But because we're on the draw he gets to play Tarmogoyf and then protect his Tarmogoyf from Liliana with the negate um, So I really feel like we have to take Tarmogoyf here Scavenging is like we could take you know some hits for like a turn or two and then just scavenging is keeping the graveyard low to make his Tarmogoyf not that bad, but I don't know. I feel this could be risky, but I feel like taking Charming Grave here is great. I'm kind of relying on Dark Confidant to draw me into some removal. Um, I don't know. This is close. Let me let me know in the comments what you think about this one, because I feel like this is a a pretty big decision on, and I think it really comes down to how we expect the game to play out. Um, by taking the Tarmogoyf, we're basically like resigning ourselves for a grindier game and hoping that our Dark Confidant will draw us into some removal to answer his Deceiver. Um, hey, I mean, we're just going to have a Brook Decay on top, so. <laughs> this is one of the things I was worried about when I was like, ah, I think I'm going to stream a Jun video. You guys, there's video evidence of how incredible Jun top decks. But, what can I say? Our opponent is thinking pretty hard about this fetch. He's like, all right, fetch resolves. Confidant. We know he has negate, snapcaster, twin, and a land? That wasn't the scalding turn, I believe? Or maybe it was. I really need to pay more attention. All right, he says fine. So here he could go like Snapcaster Serum Visions, um, just like searching for a Deceiver possibly. Um, this is pretty bad for him because we get to drop Liliana, we get our card. Uh, but if he doesn't have any way to deal with this Confidant, he needs to find some way to deal with this Confidant. Otherwise we're going to be running away with the game pretty quickly. Um, his Scry was bottom bottom. All right, we revealed the Verdant Catacombs, so free land. Um, yeah, I think we just play Liliana here. We might as well fetch again. All right, so now um, what's so good about this play is not like, oh, we killed a Snapcaster. We don't really care about that. But we're stressing our opponent's mana. Um, he's searching for ways to deal with our Dark Confidant. And then at the same time, like, Liliana the Veil is going to start picking apart his hand. So we're just, like, going to be this, like, 
buildup of resources where we have Dark Confidant gaining us cards, Liliana the Veil discarding extra lands that we don't necessarily need because our Dark Confidant is giving us cards, and our opponent has to try and find a way to answer these different question, uh, these different problems that we're presenting him while at the same time you know, trying to set up his combo. Um, this is one of the things that we talked about in my uh, article um, that got published uh, today. I'm recording on Thursday. Um, about uh, these interactive combo decks that have to, they have, you know, part of these control, like part control elements, part combo elements, and they're trying to control the game while simultaneously working to set up their combo, but they run into this issue where, you know, their hand can be, you know, composed of part control element, part combo element, so he has Splinter Twins, which don't do anything at all um, until the point where it wins in the game and it's just sitting dead in his hand. Um, That's not to say that Splinter Twin is a bad deck, it's just one of one of the things that we can take advantage of. Alright, so I think we lead off with uh, plusing the Liliana, then we Inquisition, and then we move into combat. We want to d discard the Blood Crypt. We have enough black. We need extra green for scavenging use. Yeah, so... We, we make him discard a negate, and now this uh, hopefully frees the way for this Inquisition. I guess he could go, like, Snapcaster negate. Alright, so there's a Deceiver. Yeah, which we're fine with. We have this Abrupt Decay. And that's it. So, um, I guess one of the things that we can take away from this is that you know, our opponent has a game plan, and, um, like, you know, every deck has a game plan, but, so, the, the twin deck comes to the table, you know, and this is one of, I guess, the things that I don't necessarily like about the teamer twin deck, is we, we just discussed how, you know, the deck has, you know, part combo element, part control element, but the teamer twin deck also has this, you know, aggro element, uh, as well. And I know Tarmogoyf can block. Tarmogoyf is one of the best answers to an opposing Tarmogoyf because they just run into each other and then like you can trade useless lightning bolts to finish off your opponent's Tarmogoyf and that becomes like a sub game. Um, but what we saw here is that you know our opponent was trying to like set up this game plan and he had all these different elements going on but because we had this focused element uh, like this focus strategy where we just want to you know, take an answer out of our opponent's hand and then drop something that we can use to generate an advantage and, you know, compound that effect. Um, w this showed, I guess, one of the reasons why, um, in my opinion, you know, Jund is pretty favored in the matchup. Assuming that you get these draws that are like, you know, discard into, you know, threat. The, the draws where we just hit like lots of lands and lightning bolt and expensive stuff and our opponent is able to get underneath us with remand. Uh, not so good for us, but I think this sh this showed one of the ways that you know Jund is able to pull ahead in this matchup. So that's that. We'll be back for round three.